everyone, my name is Jill Boyd. We are here today with Health Talk here at Hilton Head Health. We are filming at our Indigo Spa, and we are here today with David Chessworth from Hilton Head Health. Hey, everyone. <laughs> we decided to turn the tables today because David is typically our host. That's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting to be, to be on this side of it today. Right? Yeah. I thought you would find that interesting. I do find it mm -hmm. interesting. And so David has a very big anniversary today, which is why we are doing the show today. So, David, 10 years ago today, let's back up. Okay. A couple days before, we're going to say today's the 14th, the 12th. The 14th, yes. David was working out doing a backflip. Mind you, not at Hilton Head Health before we go any further. But I'm going to let you take the story from there. Okay. That, so thank you, Jill. That's right. It, so two days ago, 10 years ago, on the 12th, I was... Doing, I was doing what was supposed to be a backflip. I had always wanted to do a backflip. I was not historically a gymnast. I had never done a backflip before. It had simply just always been on my fitness bucket list to do one. And so I discovered this local gymnastics gym in the area. And so I was going there and was taking these classes and learned on a tumble track, oh, which okay. is like a bouncy structure, yep. kind of like a trampoline type thing. It gives you a little help. Gives you a little help, <laughs> yeah, which... You were in cheer, right? Yeah. So you probably had some experience. <laughs> Need that little momentum. Yep. And uh, so I was able to get it on the tumble track. And then I, my confidence just skyrocketed from there and was like, I think I can do this on the floor. Oh, okay. That was pretty. That was pretty smart, <laughs> right? <laughs> right, of course. <laughs> so, so I took it to the floor. It was in between classes. So it wasn't even during a class. It was just me doing my own thing. I go to the floor. By yourself? Anyone there? By myself. Well, there were people in the building. Okay. But there was no one there to spot me or... Okay give me advice or anything like that. Not so. something you would typically recommend to one of our guests. No way. Okay, not at all. Know. I was not practicing what I preached <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> in that moment. So I did one and I under rotated a little bit and landed in like that superhero pose, like on your knee and your hand. Oh, right. So mm -hmm. I was like, okay, that was pretty close. So my confidence was still in a good still spot. A good I was like, good okay, confidence. I got, okay. So I tried another one and I under rotated a little bit differently on the second one. And I kind of like landed on my side and I was like, Okay, you got this. Shake it off. Uh huh. So I do another one, and I under rotate differently, and even more, and I land on this one on my head. Ouch. Yeah. So I land on my head, and I didn't know in that moment what exactly happened, but I knew something was very wrong. Okay. So were um, you in instant pain? I was not in instant pain, but there was. I think my body instinctively knew, like, don't move. Okay. Like I just, I knew, like, this is bad. Okay. And I was like, okay, I don't know what information I'm getting from my body right now, but I'm not dead. And then I wiggled my fingers and toes and I was like, okay, I'm not paralyzed. But I knew like something was seriously wrong. So what happens then? Well, other people around were, they, they, they knew what happened. They okay. started, you know, congregating. Hover over you. Yeah, <laughs> hovering over you and asking questions and, and um, talking about what happened. And ultimately I did get to the emergency room, but before then I, like the third thought I had after I realized I wasn't dead and paralyzed, just like instinctively, uh -huh. I, I was like, this can't be happening to me. I'm not a dad yet. <laughs> <laughs> so like I, it, I had always knew I wanted to have a family, but. So, like, and at this time you're not dating. I'm not dating. No. Okay. No. So no one in your life, you're not dating. And that's your first thought. Well, I shouldn't say that. I, so I did go on one or maybe two dates with this girl. Okay. Um, who is today my wife. Well, we were going to save that for later. We were going to save okay. that for later. Okay, gotcha. Well, just cut. To, okay. So. So you went on a date with Lucia. With Lucia, yes. We had <laughs> one or two on dates. One or two dates. We saw the movie Frozen. We, uh, I think we, you know, we went, maybe had a picnic somewhere. Uh -huh. and we, we did have a few dates, um, but. So we picked back up. We picked back up to where the neck is and foolishly, also not practicing what I preached, we did not call 911. Okay. Bad. Whose idea was that? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> it was it was bad. Okay. I, I so I will say I did say I was like so should we do we think we should call nine one one? Uh huh. And you know just like the I, I think you know my end like the way I was carrying myself made people too comfortable. Okay, got yeah. Even though I sense. said those words, we all made everyone in that room right. Made a mistake that day. Okay. 911 should have been called. Head, neck, back injury. Got ya. Really dumb. Okay. That we didn't. So 
Yeah, because you got to the emergency room. We got to the emergency so room. So how did we get there? So one of the guys there, one of the other students, cradled my head mm -hmm. and assisted me as I came from a lying to a seated position. Okay. And so I'm, I'm like, okay, all right. And um, one of the coaches in the room was like, okay, you know, you've, I've seen this before. I was in Cirque du Soleil. Your neck is probably just stiff. You're probably just startled. And of course, I wanted to believe that. I was like, of course. Yeah, I was like, yeah, yeah, that's you all it is. I haven't been a dad yet. I hadn't been a dad. <laughs> that's right. I was like, yeah, of course. I'm going to be fine. I'm going to be a dad. Yeah, everything's fine. I'm just scared. I just have a stiff neck. Like, I'll be fine. So, like, she's right. She's seen this before. Why wouldn't I believe that? Right. Yeah. So, so then I, we, we walked to my car and the girl that I was dating, who I'll pretend we didn't say is now my wife. <laughs> <laughs> the girl I was dating at the time, she got in the driver's seat of my car. The plan was we were going to go to CVS, get a pain, pain medica okay. medication, go home. Just I was going to pop an Advil, go to sleep. And so she's backing out of the parking lot at this gym. And I'm like, Ooh, can you go a little bit slower? It kind of hurts. And she's like, I'm idling. Oh. I can't go any slower. And I was like, and she's like, I'm taking you to the emergency room. Okay. Thank God the emergency room Congratulations was... Congratulations to that thought process. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So thank God the emergency room was like just across the street. So okay. it was not a far drive at all. Well, that's good. She was able to basically idle the whole way there. Um, and so I walk into the emergency room holding my neck like this and I walk up and I'm like, hey, I... they're like, what seems to be the problem? And I'm like, well, I did a, what was supposed to be a backflip, landed on my head and just thought I should probably come check it out. It kind of hurts. So they weren't taking me too seriously yet either, even at the emergency room. Okay. They were like, let's put a neck brace on well, you, you just to be in. safe. I walked in. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so they put a neck brace on me just to be safe. They're like, we're cracking jokes, you know. And then they put me in this MRI, x-ray machine, and they t wheel me back to the room, and you know, we're cracking jokes. And then that's when the doctor comes in, no longer with a joking face. And he goes, don't move. Oh, my goodness. And he's like, I was like, ha, -ha. <laughs> And he was like, I'm not joking. Like, don't move. This okay. is, you have a C1, C2 fracture. This is not a joking matter. Don't move. And so I was like, oh, man. So C1, C2, that's the first two vertebrae in the neck. And he said, he was like, that's the vertebrae that is next to the part of the spinal cord that controls breathing and heartbeat. Oh, my gosh. Okay. We do not want this. So this is very serious. Very serious. Uh -huh. Yeah, this wasn't even like I might be paralyzed. This was life or death. Like right. if, if the broken bone shifted yeah. too bad. So I was like, oh, geez. Okay. And then he said, and, and also we can't. We can't help you further here. We have to transport you to Memorial Hospital in Savannah. Oh, okay. So, did you, you got medevac or? Yeah, they well they they took me uh, they put me on an ambulance. Okay. And drove me that way. Uh, so they <laughs> they brought their team in, their paramedic team, and they had their pep talk right in front of me. <laughs> About how to transport <laughs> yeah, you. Yeah, they were like. They were like, they like, they put this hard board under me and they look at each other and they're like, all right, this is a C1, C2 fracture. This has to be textbook. Oh, no. One, two, three. And I was like, ah! Uh, <laughs> and so they shift me from one table to the other. Like, is me. there any medication to knock me yeah. out for this part? Yeah, I was like, couldn't you have this pep talk out there? <laughs> so they put me in the, hot, the ambulance, they drive me. This is when the pain was really starting to kick in for okay. me on the ambulance ride. Okay. And so it was an incredibly painful ambulance ride, sitting there in the neck brace, bumping. Yeah. On the, you know, the roads were bumpier. Um, or at least if they were smooth, every bump in the road felt really bumpy. You got know? it. And so we got to the Memorial Savannah Hospital, and that's when they started giving me pain meds. And, okay. And everything kind of got a little bit blurry for a while. All right. <laughs> once I got to Savannah. And so who's with you at this time? Who's with me at this time? Lucia was at the hospital with me. Okay. And it was before I got transported to Savannah, I had to notify two parties, my right. parents. Correct. And also my workplace, which I was working at Hilton Head Health. You at the were, time. yes. So it was, this was in 2014. Yes. Um, and so Lucia, my girlfriend at the time, wife now, she's from Eastern Europe. So she has kind of like a Russian-ish accent. Mm -hmm. And so this is actually the first time she's interacting with my parents. She was the one who called them. Oh <laughs> my gosh. So, that so, so my parents get this phone call, and and Lu so Lucia has to deliver this message. And her she speaks English a lot be better now than she used to. And she used to speak really good English. It was just with a much stronger accent. So 
it's, she said something that sounded somewhat like, your son has been an accident. <laughs> <laughs> so, my, so my dad was on the phone. He couldn't handle He gave the phone to my mom. Like, I don't know what's going on. David's in trouble. There's a Russian lady. I don't know. <laughs> and so, so Lucci is the one to break the news to my parents. And then I call my supervisor at age three at the time to tell them yeah. I broke my neck, can't come to work. <laughs> and so, so, okay. So then fast forward to Savannah. I honestly don't remember who was with me. I don't think Lucia followed me initially. Mm -hmm. I think I was just with the medical team. Right. Um, but again, I was kind of drugged up, so I don't really remember the early stages. But right. my parents got in the car and drove instantly because there were no flights. From? From San Antonio, Texas at oh the time. Oh my gosh, okay. So, and so, yeah, long drive. That was probably the longest 18 hours of their life. And, but, but I do remember seeing them once right. they got there. I remember seeing a lot of, like, friends and coworkers and just different people in my life okay. coming to visit during okay. that time to see how I was doing. Like, right. Bob Wright came, for example. Um, he, he showed up. I, I don't remember exactly which day. But, so there's kind of bits and pieces of memories within between the 12th and the 14th okay and one very vivid memory i have is they were talking to me about what the options were okay and their preferred option was they they wanted to fuse my neck they wanted to okay. do a fusion the c1 c2 fusions so to heal that way okay and the the, the pros to that was that it was less risky for Got them ya. the cons is that i would forever not be able to shake my head yes or no afterwards but well, we can't like, have that. Yeah, I was like, how much? you like to say yes. I do. I would have had to use <laughs> sure. my whole body. Right? <laughs> so, yeah, I like to say, I'm a yes man. <laughs> You're a yes man. Uh, so, I was like begging them. They told me about the halo option, mm -hmm. which is like this. It's basically a cast for your, a brace for your spine, for your neck. And I was like begging them to do the halo. Okay. And they were like, we don't know if we can. We got to really look at the x-rays to see if it's even doable, if we can handle it. And, you know, so I was just like. Please, please, God, <laughs> be the halo. And, um, and so I do remember also them saying that they were able to do the halo. Okay. So. And so the like, 14th. <sighs> so on the 14th, that is the day, 10 years ago today, that I don't know when this is going to be aired, but we're filming this on February 14th. Right. We're um, and so 10 years ago today, that's when they put the halo brace on. Gotcha. And, I, and we have a picture. We have a picture. And I brought the actual headpiece, too. Oh, wow. Yeah. Very cool. So here's a picture of David in the halo. Yeah. Can everybody see that? And you, you might also see, as my parents thought it'd be funny to give me a box of halos. Like <laughs> the oranges. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. Gosh. And so, how long did you... Now, let's see it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You have it, right? Brought... Yeah, so I brought the headpiece from the Halo. And so, basically, it, it went around my head like this. And they s took these screws and screwed them in. Oh, my... Here. Oh, four of Here. them, right? There are four of them. Here, feel it. Oh, that's sharp. Yeah. Ew! You yeah. just touched that. That was in your head? It's, I've cleaned it since. Don't worry. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but yes, it was in my head. It was in your head. Yeah. That's sharp. It's pretty sharp. And uh, my wife thinks I'm crazy for keeping She's like, why would you keep that? That's like a horrible chapter. And I was like, I don't know. It's like, it's kind of a reminder of like what I overcame though. Yeah. So it's kind of cool. Like, and how many people can say they had a halo? It's here for the story. Yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah. So this was on my head and screwed it. And then I also, they had, so these things yeah. came through. <laughs> And attached to like this chest right. brace, um, and uh, so I had to wear it for I, w I wore it for two months. Right, two months. Yeah, two months, seven and a half weeks. I was because I was counting, mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, it was the longest two months ever. And did you now? At what point did you get out of the hospital? Did you stay in the hospital the entire time with this? Um, so when I got the halo, I was in the. I believe I might butcher the days a little bit, but I think I was in the hospital for one day, and then they moved me to. Uh, like a, like a outpatient physical therapy, occupational therapy gotcha. clinic. Okay. And I was there for three to four days. Okay. So they were helping me figure out how to go from a lying position to a seated position, mm -hmm. how to clean myself, how to get up and walk around. So I had to do like some like walking and, um, like I, I didn't have any nerve damage, so I didn't have to relearn that way, but you I had very to, lucky, very lucky. 
but I did have to learn how to, it, it's shocking when you have, when you remove like your entire spine mobility and your entire core mobility, mm -hmm. how awkward it is to like your whole spine is just yeah. feels glued together in this halo. So I had to like learn how to do that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then did you come back to work? I recall. <laughs> so, so I came back to work when I transitioned right from a halo to the neck brace. Okay. So I had this C collar neck brace. <laughs> and uh, so I worked at guest services yes. for a few months. <laughs> and um, it's, you know, it's funny in, ho in hospitality and the hospitality side of things, you just, you realize the problems that people have sometimes can be, can seem trivial. I mean, it is their vacation, though. It so is their vacation, right. You have to remember, like, right. it, it was an interesting psychological thing for me because on one hand, it's this guest vacation. They're spending a lot of money, right? And But it might be something like their remote ran out of batteries and yes. they're very upset about it. And so we, I will say, <laughs> we it, intentionally sometimes would say, oh, man, this person's cable's out. They're really angry. Send David out. <laughs> <laughs> they can't be as upset yeah they, they can't be as mad if they see they, the broken if neck they, guy. If david goes out so i did i did while i was working at guest services i did tally how many trivial that i that i thought were trivial complaints that i would get directed at me while wearing yeah. <laughs> a neck brace so that was kind of a fun game it was um and also it was a good empathy training for me in two ways one for I had, went from feeling invincible one day to completely incapable the next. Mm -hmm. So empathy training for certain guests who are now very immobile. Right. And also empathy training for our guest services team. Yes. <laughs> for what they experience. It's, it's, a, it's a tough, it's tough. It's tough. Yeah. yeah. So I, I, um, today we are 10 years later and how long did it take you to be comfortable after everything removed mm. to move your head side to side and up and down with comfort. Like, were you scared at first? Oh yeah. Yeah, so well, like I said, I was in the halo for seven and a half weeks and then I was in a uh, neck brace for another six or seven weeks after right. that. And then after that, my neck was incredibly weak. So like, cause the neck brace was basically holding my head up for me. Oh. I, I, it was like a nice, it was kind of a shocker how heavy. Your head is? My head, it was probably just <laughs> a very big brain, you know, <laughs> I don't know. But no, I guess the head is like eight to 12 pounds depending right. on the person. So like eight, eight, eight pounds with weak muscles all day. Yeah. I was like, oh man. So the neck was, I felt like a little baby, like relearning <laughs> how to hold my head up. But to answer your question, it probably took another two to three months for my neck muscles to not be stiff all the time, like right. all the time. Right. And then the longest element of the recovery was psychological, just like, there would, I would go through periods when I was in the halo, when I was in the neck brace, when I didn't, when I was out of it all, right. where I was like, oh no, I re-injured it. But there was no reason logically for me to think that I re-injured it. Like in, in the halo, if I heard like a squeak noise, I was like, oh no, I'm out of alignment. Okay. Yeah. And it's going to heal wrong. And my bone is now this way and it's going to push it. I just, my brain went all sorts of places and I would, <laughs> the, those great nurses and doctors I used the emergency line a lot in the beginning. I was like, I heard a noise. <laughs> Am I okay? And then, um, and then, yeah, just like if there was any weird cracking sounds, you know, just like when your knuckles crack. Right. I was like, is that okay? Is that not okay? But so psychologically, it probably took me a year to a year and a half to feel like everything was okay. Comfortable. Yeah. So um, let's get back to Lucia. Yeah. So you date Lucia. I date Lucia. And I'm sorry, Lucia, for bringing this up. <laughs> but you date Lucia. Maybe you'll be really encouraged that I did. And um, she sticks with you. She's there. She's yep. comforting you. She's helping she you. She's taking care of you. And what, nine months later? <laughs> so, you, yeah. So, you do what? Yeah. So she was basically my guardian angel throughout the whole thing. She sure was. And, uh, acknowledge that. and so I, we should definitely acknowledge that. And I me mentally, psychologically was feeling a little lost, didn't know who I was really. Um, and I also, you know, didn't, I felt like I would maybe be holding Lucia back from her dreams. And so I broke up with her. Yeah. Lucia. <laughs> <laughs> so like a fool, like a fool. Yeah. And then Five months later, three months later. I think five five months later. Five months later, roughly you... five to six. I realized I was an idiot. Yeah, of yeah, course. <laughs> like, what the heck was I thinking? And so I pursued Lucia. So yeah. I... 
and fortunately won her back. She didn't trust me for a little while. Um, so I had to kind of earn her trust back. But I, here we are. We have and a, yeah. Here we are. So then 2020, 20, what, 2020, 20, you got married. So, so yeah, so, so actually we did things kind of weird. So in 2018, we just, we legally got married. I proposed in 2018, and like a month later, we just went to the courthouse. Mm -hmm. And the reason we did that is because she's from Eastern Europe. Right. And we wanted to have a nice big wedding in her home country, Moldova. Mm -hmm. And so we wanted to make sure that we gave people time to plan a, a trip. Mm -hmm. So we gave them two years. And we were like, let's just get the paperwork out of the way. Mm -hmm. And then we can focus only on like making this awesome wedding. Right. And so we gave people two years. Well, you mentioned the wedding was supposed to be in what year? 2020. 2020. <laughs> and I think everyone knows what happened that year. No, <laughs> so, nothing. So, yeah, this, this little virus or something like yeah. that. And uh, so, obviously, we had to postpone the wedding, cancel the wedding. And we had a lot of RSVPs. Like, a lot of people from the States were going to come. Nice. Um, but since we postponed it a year to 2021... Um, we did have it in 2021. The pandemic was kind of over, but not really. It was over enough to have a wedding, yep. but not over enough to make everyone comfortable. Right. So very few people ended up coming mm -hmm. from the States, unfortunately. Um, however, fortunately, it was an incredible fairy tale wedding still. Yes. And we did do a virtual element of it, so everyone who couldn't come could still be part of it. Mm -hmm. And we had this big Facebook group and... Everyone loved it, and the people who couldn't come were a little jealous that they couldn't come now. <laughs> so, so, And then we get a flash to 2023. 2022, actually. 2022. Yes. And what happened in 2022? In 2022, um, Lucci and I had a little baby girl. Little baby girl. And Miss the, Amelia. The dream came true. The dream I came true. I became a father. And um, so, oh, you know, actually, here's an interesting part of this story. So during the time when Lucia and I were broken up, mm -hmm. uh, my sister was living in Japan. She worked at Tokyo Disney. So we yes. went to visit. And I don't think I've told you this, but in, in the Japanese culture, they have something called a Daruma doll. Have you ever heard of a Daruma doll? I have doll? not. So a Daruma doll, it's like this little, it's like a little head. Okay. Um, like, it's like an artistic looking head. It's like, and it's got this blank face. And their custom is you make a wish and you color in one of the eyeballs. Okay. And when the wish comes true, you color in the second eyeball. Okay. So I got, I got one uh, for me, and then one of the, when I was pursuing Lucia, I gave her a gift, and in the gift basket was a Daruma doll and some other things. And, okay. Um, and so when we got married, I, I never knew that she did this, but on our, our 2018 wedding day, yes. when we went to the courthouse, my parents came and some friends came. We were cutting a little cake. And Lucia comes out and presents the Daruma doll. She had made a wish that we would be together. Oh. So that was pretty cool. That's very cool. And then when Amelia was born, I was able to complete my Daruma doll. Oh. So both of our wishes came true. Very good. Yeah. So that is the overall story. I mean, there's yes. so many more details that of we course. can add. But the, the whole point we wanted to share this story is because... Um, we too have challenges that we have overcome. Absolutely. Just like, so we truly are practicing what we preach. Mm -hmm. We've been there. We've, we've experienced it. Um, and David, you really r miraculously in 10 years have become just this young, you know, kid who is invincible to this very loving husband, father, and all your dreams have come true. Yeah, and continue to. And continue to. And so in talking to our staff, who we love, right, mm -hmm. um, I really wanted to ask them, what are the words that you – give me one word to describe David. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> right? You want to hear them? They're great. Okay, I'll hear them. So funny, number one, energetic. Okay. Okay. All Everybody right. who knows David, it's high energy all the time. There's no low. Right. Right? <laughs> um, motivated. Creative. Kind, lucky, definitely, and jealous because <laughs> you have it all. Oh, and oh, they so, were jealous towards me. Yes, gotcha. Yes, so um, they really, I mean, you really have impressed them quite a bit, um, especially myself over the years and seeing how you've transitioned and what you've overcome, and it's just nothing short of miraculous. 
So now fun things. questions. Okay, fun questions. Here's, here's one the team wants to know. How long does it take you to write an H3 jingle? Oh, okay. <laughs> How, okay, so well, the first one was Unwise Better Best. Yes. And that one... That one was just like, I don't know how that one came to me. That one took an afternoon. An afternoon? Yeah. Sometimes, a, like, religious, spiritual, what, something bigger than you in the creative world, like, just overtakes you and is like, well, I'm going to use your brain and you're going to produce this song. That's, uh -huh. what it feel, that's what it feels like sometimes. Yes. So the Unwise Better Best probably took a couple hours, and that's probably the most iconic around here, the Unwise Better Best. Some of them... Um, I, there's a message I really want to create uh -huh. and I, it doesn't come to me. So what I do in that instance first is I write a poem and then, you know, like try to come up with a story through a poem and then I'm, I figure out what the chords are later. Mm -hmm. So that, it, it, it usually takes me a few weeks to do it that way. Okay. Yeah. But, but those of you who don't know, David also plays the guitar and sings yes. and writes music. And yes. so hopefully with this, um, podcast, we can post one of those songs. Yeah. For I can send them to, to you. Hear. Because that, that would be great, especially yeah. unwise, better, best. I got oh yeah, that was yeah. my intern project. That was your intern. <laughs> yeah, it, well, it became because I wrote it. It then became an intern project to make a music video. See, <laughs> it's great. So another question. Yeah. What motivates you to want to stay here at Hilton Head Health and work here? So candidly, over the years, there were several times where I thought maybe I would go somewhere else, and in the very beginning, I never thought I would still be here, um, but. Every time that those chap those moments come up, it becomes a really, I have to think really deeply about it, and it becomes almost an emotional thing. And and a new door opens for you here. And then a new door opens for me here. Right. Exactly. So on the professional side, the growth opportunity has been pretty steady. Mm -hmm. So it career-wise has made sense to stay here. And then just there's something about Hilton Head Health that is it feels bigger than a job. It's just like it doesn't. There are elements that are job-like. But you just feel like you're part of something really big. Yeah. Yeah, even though it's a small place. I, I always say I yeah. enjoy working at Hilton Head Health because it's like Disneyland. It's it like, is. It's, it's the like, best job on earth. Yeah, it is. I, I think it's better than Disneyland. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it's funny you say that because my brother and sister at one point both worked for Disney in one capacity or another. Uh -huh. And at one point they were working for Disney at the same time. And everyone was like, what are you going to do for Disney? And I was like, well, I kind of work at a place like Disney. <laughs> <laughs> so next question. Yeah. What is your guilty pleasure? Okay, my guilty pleasure, this is going to sound silly, but eating out for lunch is like probably... <laughs> it's so true. Java burrito, fiesta Java burrito, fresh. Fiesta fresh. <laughs> like, I am addicted to eating out for lunch, and it is not financially intel like wise to do that. Right. Like, it's, it's ridiculous to eat out every day. But I'm not a huge drink. Like, I drink socially, you know, mm -hmm. at part, you know I'm not a big drinker. Um, not a, I've never been a substance person, but just like, that is... I just spend money on lunch <laughs> every day almost every day and of course there's like some you know some some tv shows i would probably throw in there that i go through chapters and stuff but yeah the next one is um what what makes you laugh <sighs> a lot makes me laugh yeah right a lot makes me laugh so tense serious situations can be funny <laughs> so like when I th and it, when it would be inappropriate to laugh, that would those are times that's really mm -hmm. hard for me not to laugh. What it, whose um, bachelor party did you go on, and what, was that yours? It may have been, oh, okay, oh, okay. So, Impractical Jokers. Yes. The show, <laughs> pranks make me laugh. Pranking. Awkward situations. So the show Impractical Jokers is like it. It capitalizes on all that I think is funny. Uh -huh. So on my bachelor party, we did a bar crawl, and me and my me and the guys played our version of Impractical Joker is where we had to do something socially uncomfortable. Like, for example, what I had to do, one of the things I had to do is go up to a group of strangers and just insert myself in their conversation <laughs> as though I've been there the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> and so that was, that's one of many examples. And, um, what was the wall one? Oh, the wall one. So my buddy Alex. So we were at this, it was actually we were at a speakeasy in, oh, okay. in Austin, Texas. That one, that's one thing that did make it easier is every, we, all the situations we were in, everyone was at least buzzed, if not further. Right. So it made it easier for us to do these. But so his challenge was he had to pretend that he was like a secret agent scaling a skyscraper. So he like shoved himself up <laughs> against a wall and like shuffled across <laughs> the room. And uh, this, this other group of, 
of, of girls came up and go, is your friend, is he tripping on something? And we're like, no, we just dared him. <laughs> so, so, yeah, all sorts of we all stuff. like to do some practical little jokes in the office. A lot of scary yes. tactics going on and behind the scenes. Yes, yes, that's right. And we learn what each other's boundaries are sometimes. We do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So is there anything that you want to add to your story that maybe we've missed? Or? Um, well, I guess, yeah. So, like, so now that I have a daughter, her name's Amelia. She's 18 months now. Uh, a month ago, she she fell and scraped her chin, and uh, she ended up needing a few stitches. But I wasn't really there when it happened, and so like the information I got was partially incomplete, and you know I was partially in panic mode. So I kind of catastrophized everything. So all the words that I remembered getting were blood, chin, neck, fell, emergency room, and like. So Lucia told me a lot more details than that, but yes. that's what really jumped but at that's me. All, well, those are probably things that were relatable to what happened to you at one right. point, right? Exactly. I, minus the blood. Minus the blood. <laughs> so in my my mind, I was like, in between talking to her, I was like, wait, was she able to stop the bleeding? Um, did she call 911? Like, how bad is it? And like, I called her back. She didn't answer. Um, so I texted her, didn't hear back for a little bit. So I was like driving as fast as like, I left work right away uh -huh. as fast as I could to the emergency room. Which, not the emergency you were at, but the one all the way out. An even further one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And so on that drive, it was a 20 minute drive. I was, I was wondering if I was like going to get to say goodbye or like I was going to see her and like turned out to be a scratch on her chin with stitches, but I catastrophized it in my brain. And then I got there and was like, Oh, thank God. It's just, so, scratch. yeah. And then, and then, and then I was like, Lucia was like, do you think she's going to have a scar? I was like, who cares? She's alive. Yeah, she's alive. And then I was like, wow. My parents had to do an 18-hour version of that. Yep. And I had something that was actually way worse. It was not a few stitches in the chin. No. And I would say that during that, I was more intensely scared during that 20 minutes for Amelia than any intensity of scared I was for myself. Wow. I mean, it was a hard too much. It was, it was very hard. But you fear for those you care about live for some reason more than your own sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you're a dad now. Yeah. It's so more at stake. There it was. Yeah. That's so. a perfect experience of it. So... Call 911. If you, go to the doctor if you're not sure. Call 911 with a head, neck, back injury. Don't be like me. Um, <laughs> take care of yourself. If something weird's going on, better safe than sorry. Yeah. Those Message the, is yes. listen to your body. Yes. Right? Yeah. Listen to your body. Well, we are so glad to have you today, and I'm, I'm yeah. sorry I, I hijacked your show. I'm glad you did. This but is cool. But I think this was absolutely necessary for our our guest and our friends and family to truly understand the experience from beginning to end and what you've overcome. And congratulations to you on all of that. Thank you so much. We're all Jill. very proud. And thank you for your support, your support, H3 support. And I know you're a big part. You're the COO of H3. So um, thank <laughs> well, you for I everything. Mean, yeah. But we yeah. should probably give a shout out to all our team, right? We should give a yeah. shout out to all our team, to everybody. We, yeah. yeah. We got a lot of behind scenes people that we yeah. meet with daily that they don't get to, yeah. to get out there. That's so. true. Shout out to all of them for everything they do, and, and we're really proud to be here at H3.